When I was in hospital, once I started to get better, they would let me get up and walk about. I used to walk out of my ward and down the corridors. Bit by bit, I was getting stronger. One time I got to the end of one corridor that I hadn't walked down before and there was a ward in front of me. I was feeling a bit bored, so I thought I would just pop in and have a look. I noticed that it was very quiet. For a moment I wondered if everyone in the ward had died. It was all so still. Instead of walking out, which is what I should have done, I went further into the ward. The beds were all where they normally are, all along the wall, some with drips or machines of some kind. None of the beds were empty, but instead of people in them, there were chess pieces. Not ordinary chess pieces, human-sized ones. They just lay in the beds, not moving or making any sound. Pawns, knights, kings, queens and the rest. I thought that I'd be able to figure out some kind of order to it. You know, kings and queens in some kind of special beds or maybe the pawns would be the nurses or the cleaner. But no, 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 it was nothing like that. It was just that there were all, all the different chess pieces in the beds. Though now I think about it, I don't remember seeing a bishop. There should have been four. But I don't remember there being even one of them. Well, with me today is Francesca Simon, author of, as you may know, the great Horrid Henry books. Look at that great big stack I've got there, Francesca, all owned by my son, who Ooh. was very cross that I came away with them. He wanted to be absolutely sure I was coming back with did them. Did he count them out? He didn't. He did trust me, <laughs> which is quite rare. And we'll also talk about a much newer book, yeah. The Monstrous Child. What yeah. a terrible title. Sorry, quite scary. <laughs> but let's start with... Horrid Henry, yes. right? Great favourite with millions of children. Let's say I'm somebody who wants to write a, a story and a bit yeah. like Horrid Henry, but I'm not going to make up, I could make up right. another Horrid Henry story. I'm right. sure you know children have said, oh, I've made up a Horrid Henry story and that's great, of isn't course. it? So Horrid Henry goes to space or Horrid Henry could do anything, couldn't you? Horrid Henry gets in a submarine and he could do any. Horrid pulls Henry out rides, the plug on a, and the rides a dinosaur. To, yes, exactly. So we could take Horrid Henry everywhere. So that's one way to write stories yeah. off the back of yours. But another one would be to make up another character mm. that would be inspired by Absolutely. you. Absolutely. I mean, I the way I came up with all my characters is I think of horrible adjectives. So I always start with the adjective. Like, oh right. Like rude or sour or so moody. Be rude or, Ruby. Or, exactly. Or, and then I think of a name to go with it. Yes, nasty uh, Norma. Yes, I mean, exactly, yeah. exactly, or new Nick, so I, I you know, the new kid in town, yeah. um, fiery Fiona, the bad-tempered girl. Yes. So I have a lot of fun thinking up adjectives. So children could do that. They absolutely, could, they could absolutely. They could spin off from your, your stories and make up, t find an adjective, uh, happy, unhappy, moody, whatever, another, or t steal one of your adjectives, Absolutely. make up a character, and then use that to start writing another story. Definitely. And yeah. then thinking of a situation and then asking themselves, what would my character, what would happen if? Yeah, what so if we've got Nasty if? Norma, Nasty Norma's in school, she's being nasty to everyone. Why is she being nasty? What does she want? Why, Why is she being so nasty? Yes. Who can stop her being nasty? Can, is there someone even nastier who could come? Because oh. the thing is that in our own, we can all write the story of the good child because that's basically who we are. You know, we come home, we sit down, we have some milk, we eat some biscuits, we do our homework, we watch TV, we brush our, you know. <laughs> And you want someone who's, who's going to mix this up a bit. So the only stories, for example, where Perfect Peter is featured is when he's out of character. Yes, there's one bit where he wants to be horrible himself, isn't he? He tries to be horrible. I love that one. He wants yes. revenge. Yeah. 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 So, um, so you break his... You his, break that. Yeah. But, but to start with a character and then ask yourself, you know, if you're trying to create a character, ask yourself questions about the character. Like I said, does the character, you know, does she have brothers and sisters? Yeah. Is she the oldest? Is she the youngest? What does her bedroom look like? What's her... You can ask yourself and, and when the answers to those questions can really help you build a character. And then the other thing I think that can be really helpful for story writing is to mash two ideas together that you weren't thinking were connected. Oh yeah, So on. for example, I was 
Um, my son had his bar mitzvah, and we spent an entire summer arguing about his writing thank you letters. Have you written your thank you letters? No, I haven't written them. When are you going to write them? Anyway, it was <laughs> terrible. This went on all summer. And then my husband randomly one day asked me, have you ever thought of Horrid Henry starting a business? And I said, yes, a thank you letter writing business, except in Henry's case, it would be no thank yous. Oh, yes. So yes. Uh, combining the business with the thank you letter only because those were the two things. So if you keep an ideas notebook, which is another big tip, Look at your ideas notebook and see if you can mash together two ideas. Completely different. Completely like a, different. Um, like maybe you want to write about a sports day, but maybe you also like writing about animals. What about an animal sports day? Boom. You want to write a ghost story. What about a ghost family? Yes. You know, so all of these, it makes or your... Or a ghost sports day. Exactly. Yes. A, absolutely. Or outer... Whatever you... But to combine two unexpected ideas... Yeah. can make for a really fun story. Because it's quite hard when someone says, right, let's write a story. And you yeah. think, I have no ideas. Yeah. I have absolutely no ideas. My dog went to the park. Yeah. But well, then if we think dog and ballet, exactly. then suddenly we've got a dog ballet. And you and I both sat up and you thought, yeah, dog ba <laughs> a dog who wants to do ballet. There's yeah. a ballet school for dogs. Yeah. Or is there a, ca a rival cat Ballet cat, school. Cat ballet. Exactly. And it's dog ballet versus cat, cat ballet. ballet for the yeah. for the prize. Already yeah. we've got a much better story than <laughs> I took my dog to for, the park yeah. and he sniffed around. Yeah. So that is a really freeing way of of just allowing you to to come up with with fresh ideas. Because yeah. it's a great way to start is to think about an idea that you like or a book that you love or a film that you love or a television program you love and think, how could I make mine a little bit different? Like Let's say you like stories about boarding schools and wizards. That category might have been taken. So you might think, okay, well, what about if it's an alien boarding school? Yes. Or what about if it's a ghost boarding school? So you can take, you can start off with something and then make it completely yours. Yeah. Francesca Simon, thanks ever so much indeed. Thank you. That's lovely that Thank you, you Michael. To talk to us. Now, it would be great if you subscribed, that is, you become a subscriber. Look out for the subscribe button. What happens, you see, is that I make new vids every few months, and then I post them up one a week for a while. So if you subscribe, you get to see the new ones just as they come hot off the press. Eww.